Hey everyone, welcome back to NDC, and in this video, you're going to learn the right way to clone and fork GitHub repositories for Xcode using both the native GUI and terminal. By the end, you'll know exactly when to clone, when to fork, and how to handle projects with or without an Xcode proj file. Let's go ahead and dive on in. So for this, you'll need Xcode installed, a GitHub repo you want to copy, and if it's a private repo, you may need to sign into your GitHub account first. Let's first talk about cloning. This is when you want local access, maybe to study code, run it, test it, or back up your own repository. But if you clone someone else's project, you can't push changes back to the original source. It's like downloading read-only access. To clone, you'll need to go to the GitHub repository. So in this case, I'm accessing my Instagram recreation number two and copy the URL. When you open up Xcode, you'll be greeted with the create new project, clone git repository. We're gonna press this button. Since I'm signed into GitHub on Xcode, I can see all my Git repositories already. Otherwise, we'll want to paste the URL in the top search bar. We can then hit the clone button. We can then choose where we want to save it. I'm going to opt for my desktop. We can see here it's already opened itself up. We have the content view. Let's go ahead and load that canvas. And here we go. Here's that Instagram recreation we had created. And I have the local files on my computer. You can also clone via the integrate button at the top of Xcode. You can see here we have the clone option. If you want to clone via the terminal, you'll once again want to grab that URL and delete the one we had just created with Xcode. Open up terminal. We'll then want to set the directory where we want to save this. So I'm going to do CD for current directory and I'm going to put on my desktop. So I'm going to do the tilde slash desktop. Otherwise you can see in the top where you're going to be accessing these files. And now that we've updated to desktop, we can see in terminal, that's where we're using it. We'll then do the git clone space, and then we're going to paste in that URL. We'll press return. We can see here, once again, it's added to our desktop, move it on over here. And we have the Xcode project again. Now, before we move on, just because you can clone a repo doesn't mean you should treat it like free material to steal. Open source has morals behind it. Read the license, respect the author, and give credit where credit's due. If you plan to improve or reuse the code, that's exactly what forking is for. Don't just lift someone's work and call it your own. Let's talk about forking. Forking is a professional way to contribute to open source. You can see here on a GitHub repository, in the top right, we actually have the fork option. When we click on fork, GitHub actually creates a copy under your account. We can also clone that copy locally. We can push changes to our fork, and from there, if we wanted to, submit a pull request to the original repo. Let's go ahead and press the fork button. We can see here, by default, it's just going to copy whatever the original project name was. If there's multiple branches, you can choose which one you want to fork. So it's gonna go ahead and create the fork for us. It should only take a few seconds. If it's a larger project, it might take a little bit more time. We can see here that I now have the fork of this project. We can go ahead and copy the URL, either with the built-in tools or with terminal, we can go ahead and clone that repository. And now we have our own version of this Xcode project. When cloning or forking, you may run into situations where the Xcode proj or XC workspace might not be available. So double check that what you're trying to clone or fork isn't a package. In the case of Kingfisher, this is a Swift package that you can add via the Swift package manager. In that case, you'd copy the URL, Head on into Xcode under the file, add package dependencies, and enter the package URL in order to add that package. I do have a video covering this if you want to check that out. If you're unsure if it's a Swift package and doesn't have the Xcode proj, you can often just clone it via the terminal. That's usually the safest way. As a reminder, if you're accessing any private repos, you need to set up a personal access token in Xcode. You can do so by going to Xcode settings. Under the source control tab here, you'll see your accounts. If you were to add an account, let's say I want to add a GitHub account, you'll need to enter your personal access token and sign in through GitHub. So if you have a private repository, whether that's your own private repository or one that someone has added you to, you need to make sure that you're signed in with the proper token here. And that's it. You now know when to clone, when to fork, and how to use both Xcode and Terminal depending on the project. So dream big, code bigger, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz, and we'll see you in the next one.